Hello guys, this is Tony from TakeActionNow.co.uk. You're listening to the Attract Success Now audio CD. In this CD, I'm going to give you some simple to understand and easy to apply tips that you can use to one, get yourself out of a slump or depression and start to feel happier. Two, get motivated and get energized. Three, start a business or get further with your existing business if you already have one. Four, learn how to actually learn and five how to find a teacher and formulate a dmo which is a daily method of operation or a method of operation so let's get started okay guys first things first i'm going to give you 17 ways to improve your life feel happier and bring more money into your life okay number one what you need to do is write down a gratitude list and add three things to it every single day. What that means is that you're gonna write examples of things that you are grateful for. That means, an example of what I mean is that you could write, I am so grateful for having my arms. I'm so grateful for having my legs. I'm so grateful for having my house. I'm so grateful for having my sisters. I'm so grateful for having my brothers. I'm so grateful for having all my aunties like this you're just basically going to list down all of the basic things that you have that you're grateful for in your life and what you're going to do is you're going to add three things to that every single day eventually you're going to have a long gratitude list it's going to probably take you five ten minutes to read your gratitude list and when what you're going to do with that list is it's going to allow you to quickly shift yourself out of a negative uh, vibration so anytime you feel negative, what you're going to do is you're going to go back to your gratitude list and you're going to read that list from start to finish. And that's going to make you think about only the things that you're grateful for. Okay, let's move to the next one. Number two, you're going to make sure that your thoughts and actions match up. What I mean by this is that you're going to make sure that you ask yourself, what do you want in life? And then when you answer that question, you make sure that your actions are actually Uh, in alignment with what you've said for example what I'm saying is if you were if you wanted to be a champion swimmer you'd have to make sure that you're hitting the pool maybe once a day or every other day at least if you're going to be a champion swimmer champion swimmers are in the pool so whatever it is that you're intending to do you have to actually make sure that you're physically following up and actually making sure that you're bringing your your activities into alignment with what you're saying that you want to be achieving or want to be doing. Very important. Number three, you're going to make sure that you focus on the right things. From now on, instead of saying, why haven't I got the car that I want? You're going to focus your mind on an activity that will earn you enough money to have what you want. So you're going to make sure that you focus on the cause, not the effects. So you're gonna make sure that you focus on the right things from now on, okay? Number four, you're gonna make sure that you ask yourself the right types of questions from now on. Instead of saying, why does this always happen to me? You're gonna ask yourself, what positive action could I do to make sure this never happens again? Because questions are very, very important. And if we don't ask ourselves the right questions, then we end up asking ourselves the wrong questions automatically. Most people out there are walking around asking themselves the wrong questions day in, day out. And when you ask yourself a bad quality question, you're going to definitely get a bad quality answer. So from now on, you're going to ask yourself positive questions, not negative questions. Number five, you need to start tracking your expenses. What I mean by this is you're going to write down the things that you spend on a daily basis and that's going to allow you to keep control of your incomings and outgoings and basically uh, allow you to, to not lose track of where you are financially. Eventually, you're going to come to the point where you start to see what you spend the most money on and even realize that you spend a lot of money on things that you don't really mean to spend money on. So, very important, track your expenses. Number six, You're going to save a minimum of 10% of your gross pay every year from the beginning of the year 
till the end of the year. If we're in the middle of the year, then you start in the middle, but you start now. So what you need to do is you need to be saving 10% every year, every time you get paid. And then basically what you're going to do is you're going to let that build up and grow. If you can raise that figure to 20% or 30%, doing this will raise your self-esteem as you see your money getting bigger in the bank. Doing this will also give you a lump of money that you can use to invest in your future. Maybe to put down money on a mortgage payment, maybe to buy a car, or maybe, I don't know. Whenever you need a, a big lump sum of cash, you're going to have it there. So that's going to make you feel automatically better. You know, you can't feel the same way when you have uh, £10,000 in the bank as you feel when you have nothing in the bank. When you, You're not going to feel as desperate and under pressure when you start to amass a good chunk of money in your account. So that's what you need to do. Pay yourself first, that's called. Very important part of wealth generation. Seven, when you get paid, make it a priority to buy yourself some concert tickets or something that excites you every single month. Maybe it might be going down to see uh, your favorite theatrical play, whatever it is, you're gonna make sure you do that once a month as a treat from you to yourself. It's very important that we celebrate um, ourselves sometimes and just just treat ourselves because what can happen is when you don't do things like that for yourself, then you start to have nothing to look forward to. You don't, you can't spend all of your time thinking about everybody else but yourself. And also you can't spend all of your time thinking about only yourself. But it is very important to spend quality time doing something that you want to do for yourself every month. Number eight, do something nice for a member of your family every single week. This will make you feel good and remind your family that you love them. It might be that you take somebody out for dinner that you haven't seen in a while, one of your your aunties, your uncles, you know, it, may, it might be that you buy one of your little nieces or little cousins or nephews a present. Basically, doing this type of thing will, will allow them to know that you still care about them and you still you still think about them even though you're a successful person and you're moving towards your dreams. It will just allow them to know that you're still there, you still care for them. Number nine, do something nice for a stranger every week. This will make you feel good and it will also make somebody else who might not have received anything good for a long time from somebody else, let, it would let them know that people who don't even know them care for them. It might change their whole view of reality. And it will definitely change your view of reality because when you practice giving people that you don't know something that is precious to you or something, just giving them anything, what you're practicing is uh, abundance because you cannot give like that to a person that you don't know and that you're not obligated to give to without first understanding that, okay, I actually have more than enough. So you're practicing I have more than enough, the idea of I have more than enough in physical reality by doing that. So make sure you give something to a stranger every week. Number 10, write out some goals for your future and read them daily. Most importantly, Understand that your goals manifest faster when your daily habits are in line with them. E.g., if you want to be a, a champion swimmer, like I said, uh, you must be going to the pool every day as a habit or very regularly as a habit. So, for example, if your goal, whatever you write down as a goal, uh, make sure that you form a habit of actually, make sure that your habits match up with the goals that you're going to write down. So definitely, if you haven't got a set of goals written down for yourself, you need to write down, get a piece of paper, go to your mobile phone and write down a set of goals for yourself. Write down maybe five, ten things that you want to achieve uh, by the end of the week, by the end of the month. And then just basically read your set of goals every day. Keep it in your back pocket. Keep it somewhere safe that you can draw from quickly. Again, whenever you feel frustrated, you want to be reading your gratitude list and then you, what you want to do is take out your list of goals because this, these are the things that successful people focus on. Successful people focus on what their goals are and they also focus on what they're grateful for. And that's why they can move out of a feeling of negativity very, very quickly. 11. 
Go to the gym or exercise at least once a week. You'll stay in shape, you'll feel great and it'll raise your energy levels massively. 12. Keep yourself looking well-groomed and well-dressed. Make this a priority. It will make you feel good and it will also attract people to you. Very important. And it will also uh, allow other people to know that it's okay to, to look good. And it will just basically make everybody around you see that you're setting an example. You know, you're setting an example of high standards. 13. Create a blog and write in your blog daily and make videos about positive changes that you're making to your life. What that's going to do is it's going to give others inspiration and it's also going to attract others to you and it's also going to inspire yourself when you see changes taking place in your life. Your blog is like basically like a diary of all of the, the interesting things that are happening to you. Use that opportunity of having a blog to put all of the things that you're improving, of all of the things that that you've learned and the advances that you've made. 14. Make sure that you start to run an event, even if it's only a small event or even if it's only an online event like a webinar. You need to be, as a successful person, you need to be gathering people together so you can tell them what you have to offer and what and how you're improving your life. Basically, this is going to position you as a, a leader within your community and within your circle of friends. And basically, it's going to give you the advantage when it comes to setting up your business because it's easy for people who hold events to start businesses because they obviously have um, access to people all the time, to new people, because they're always doing events and meeting new people and gathering new people. So that means that their circle of influence and their networks are huge. So you definitely want to tap into that and become a person who... who uh, does events, organizes events and promotes your own events because that's going to place you in a good position. It's going to place you in the position of importance as a leader. 15. Take professional pictures of yourself regularly, at least once a month. If you have to, at least maybe quarterly. Like you need to be taking pictures very regularly of yourself because. Number one, as an important person, you need to be seeing yourself. You need to be seeing yourself at your best because this is what's gonna this is how you're gonna form a mental image, a positive mental image of yourself. This is how you're gonna change what you perceive yourself to be for the better. Whenever you take a picture of yourself and you see yourself in in, in a good outfit with a good quality camera and you know just you're just looking good it basically, it allows you to fix in place into your mind an image of yourself that is impressive. And eventually you grow into that. And also, if you're, uh, again, a positive person who's moving forward, it's good for you to see that, okay, last month I lost a bit of weight. I can see it in the pictures, you, you're getting, you know, you can see your face getting a bit slimmer, you can see your body getting a bit slimmer. So yeah, make sure that you're taking pictures regularly of yourself. And also, sorry, before I go to the next point, the one of the most important reasons that you're going to take pictures of yourself regularly is because you're going to need them for your Facebook and for your social media campaigns. For all of your uh, products that you do, you're going to need professional pictures of yourself. Don't use like the, the camera phone pictures because, I mean, these pictures, the camera phones are getting better and better by the day and they're okay to quickly do a picture of yourself or, or whoever, but nothing beats a professional studio quality photo shoot. So make sure you do that for yourself. 16. Drink, drink water and eat more fruit and vegetables and cut down on your drinking, smoking and things like that. By doing this, you're going to improve how you feel and how you look because you're taking in less toxic, more healthy stuff. The more healthy stuff you take in, the less room you have in your system to take in unhealthy stuff. 
I guarantee you, you start drinking a lot of water every day, you're going to find yourself less uh, going to having cravings of having, you know, sugary stuff, alcohol, you know, things like that. So you're definitely going to try and take in pure things like salads, vegetables, fruits and water. 17. Listen to something motivational every day in the morning while you're having your breakfast and in the nighttime before you go to bed. This puts you in a positive mind state and ready for the new day ahead of you. When you are coming into consciousness from sleep, your brain is in a very receptive state. This is the perfect time for you to uh, put on the motivational audios and let the positive information sink in. Also, as you're going to bed, the same thing. You're in a very receptive, your brain is in a very open state. It's in a very receptive state. A very good time for you to give yourself uh, positive instruction and to fill your head with positive things. Most people, these are the times when they watch the news and they are hit with negativity. So, this is the reason why most people wake up and they, they, they head to work and they're feeling negative. Before they've even got to work, they're feeling negative because while they were in their receptive state, when they were eating their breakfast, they switched on the TV straight away and they're hit with the negative news. Negative news. Negative, negative, negative. What you want to do is you want to be in that time, you want to be doing the opposite of what everybody else is doing and you want to be filling your head with positive material. And here's a bonus tip which is very important. You want to start a home business. The reason why you want to do that is because when you start your home business, it's going to grow your self-esteem massively. Uh, you're going to earn more money. You're going to have a better quality of life. And you're going to be more attractive to the people you meet because business people have to conduct themselves with a, um, a higher level of you know, conduct and presentation. You, just operating your own business is going to force you to be more presentable. It's going to force you to be more well-spoken. It's going to force you to dress better. It's going to force you to do a load of um, more. It's going to force you to do a load of things which are going to basically improve you. So that's why the bonus tip is start your own home business. It doesn't have to be successful straight away, but the point is you're going to start now. And the reason you're going to start now is because of all the other the side effects that starting your own business and running your own business is going to have on you. This book is for people who want to be successful, for people who are hungry for success, for people who want to create massive change in their lives and achieve their most important dreams. Before you can be successful, here's a question for you. What is success? Success equals the pursuit and accomplishment of your highest, most important goals. Living the lifestyle that you really want. Being wealthy, happy, fit, healthy, and having the power to take action now and move towards what you want to achieve. What is failure? Failure equals not accomplishing your most highest and important goals and not living the lifestyle you want. Doing the same things over and over and expecting different results. Complaining and blaming others for your situation. The key to success. What is it? Goal setting? Time management? Knowledge? No. I think the key to success is your ability to take action now. Power is the ability to take action and do something while others just learn, study, think and debate. Your power is in your ability to actually do something that moves you towards your desired goal. Colonel Sanders is a great example of this. He got 1,009 no's before he got his first yes. While others would have just made excuses, studied but have taken no action, he hit the road and learned as he went and put himself to the test. There are many people who are a lot less intelligent than you, who are rich right now because they are willing to take action now and do something, while most people will just talk, think, learn, but not do. So what are some of the things that stop us from taking action right now? One, lack of energy. Two, fear of failure. Three, 
lack of role models. Four, low self-image. You have to get around the right people, or if you can't, then you can watch their videos and read their books. You must learn to model people who have achieved the results you want to achieve. Three things that you must do to model a person are Number one, find out what they believe that you don't believe. Number two, find out what the strategy and order of the activity and execution of how they do what they do. Example, find out the ingredients that they put into their cake and the recipe for how to actually mix all the ingredients together and how long to bake it for. And you will get the same cake as the master chef. Three, find out how they use their body. Study how they use their body and their physicality and the effects that this has on their internal communication. Example, how a person uses their body to do a specific task can massively affect how they feel and what they tell themselves in their head as they're about to do the task. Fear of failure. You must start to see your failures as a learning experience. You must learn to turn your fear into power. You must learn to see all failures as learning experiences and you must also learn to master the things that you find it most difficult to do. A very important secret of success is this. Success is not about trying hard. Success and failure are actually automatic. When you were born and as you grow up into an adult, your family and friends condition you for either success and wealth or failure and struggle. Imagine a mountain and you are on top of it deciding which side to climb down, either the success side or the failure side. Success and failure are automatic because once you are moving down the mountain, you find it harder and harder to change direction and you start to move faster and faster in the chosen direction of either success or failure. Your friends and family are on one of the sides, encouraging you to climb down their side of the mountain. This will encourage you to run down the side they're on because this is the side that they're familiar with. Not because it's better for you, just because they are familiar with it. They will make you feel like you should be just like them until you're at the bottom of the mountain on their side. If that side is the success side, you're okay and enjoying life. But if that side is the failure side, then you have a problem. The question you might be asking is why would somebody know they're on the failure side of the mountain and stay on that side. Let me introduce you to the self-image. Your self-image controls how you dress, how you eat, how you play, make friends, talk, everything. You see, your self-image creates your beliefs. Your beliefs create your thoughts. Your thoughts create your habits. Your habits dictate how you interact with people and who you interact with. And who you interact with and how you interact with them dictates your circumstances. And your circumstances dictate how you see yourself. How you see yourself dictates your self-image. And then over and over, like a loop. It is a subconscious image you have of yourself inside your head that governs how you experience reality on the outside. Your self-image is your autopilot. And it will kick in to make sure you always get what you think you should get. Your self-image was formed when you were between 4 and 14 years old. And it stays constant unless changed. It can change. And if it is changed, you will see a massive result on the outside world. Your self-image is there so you remember who you are when you wake up in the morning. But in most of us, it wasn't designed by us. It was designed by our friends and family. Most of us are living out the projected reality that those around us have created for us to live. So how can we change and improve our self-image? 1. Reading out affirmations. 2. Making a conscious effort to look good and dress well. 3. Meeting new people and making new friends that we want to be around, not the people that we have grown up being around. 4. Sitting and standing with good posture. 5. Eating healthy foods and drinks. 6. Writing out goals. When you change your self-image to see yourself as a powerful person who can achieve your goals, your life will increase in all ways. Raising your frequency or energy. 
For you to manifest what you want in your life, you must dramatically raise your energy levels. If your energy is too low, you can know all the information in the world and you won't use it. You'll just repeat doing what is already working for you now. In order to make changes in your life, you must have more than enough energy and enthusiasm to get yourself into physical movement. It's like this. If you don't have petrol for your car, then your car cannot move. And in the same way, if you don't have enough enthusiasm and energy to change your life, then you cannot change your life. You must keep your vibration high enough with physical movement, laughter, human interaction, singing, and keeping yourself clean and hydrated. Here are some techniques for raising your frequency or energy levels. One, exercise every day for at least 20 minutes. Two, sing along to your favorite song at least once a day out loud. Three, watch your favorite comedian once a day. Four, speak out loud for 30 seconds minimum daily some powerful, powerful affirmations. Example, saying affirmations like, I am focused, I am strong, I am energetic, I exercise. Saying these affirmations for at least a minute to 30 seconds every single day will change the way that you see yourself and will give you energy. Saying affirmations like that will give you energy to, to carry on in moments when you feel like you're not motivated and you're losing your attention and you're losing your energy to, to move on and move forward. You are attracting what you're focused on. You will attract what you think, say and do. So make sure you are thinking about what you really want and saying what you really want because your life will mirror your consistent thoughts, words and actions. Have you ever noticed that some people are always complaining, gossiping about others and obsessed with blaming other people for their circumstances? These people are focused on the wrong things so they don't achieve what they want. You need to focus on things that will improve your life and things you want to bring into your life, not what is wrong with your life. Let me ask you a question. How would your dream life look? If every one of your dreams came true, how would your dream life look? What would you do in the morning? What would you do in the evening? What country would you live in? Most people are experts in knowing what they don't want. But this is not good at all, because if you're an expert in what you don't want, then you must have a clear picture of it in your mind. And having a clear picture of anything in your mind is the fastest way of creating that picture in the real world. So, stop thinking about what you don't want and start thinking from now about what you don't want. You must learn to create clear pictures in your mind of what you do want in your life. If you don't know what your dream life would look like in your mind, then you can never create it for yourself in the real world. Set some goals. A man without a goal is like a ship in the middle of the sea with no map, compass and no destination. You must write down a list of goals that you really want to achieve. Not things that you think is possible to easily achieve. Things that you really want and are not sure it's even possible for you to have. Your list of goals should excite you. Your list of goals should turn you on and make you smile when you read them. Keep them with you at all times and read them out loud at least once a day. Your list of goals should create a clear image inside your mind that will communicate to your subconscious all the things that you want to attract into your life. The image inside your mind is called your self-image. Your self-image is a blueprint for your brain that your brain follows every single day to create every aspect of your life. As you repeatedly imagine yourself with your goals achieved, that image inside your brain starts to have your goals added into it. You start to see yourself as a person with those goals achieved. That car, that house, everything in your list. When this happens, you'll start to attract these things into your physical reality. Ask yourself this question, what do you want your life to be like? Now get a pen and paper and write out a list of your goals that you want to achieve. Make them big and exciting. Do it right now. You must become bigger than your fears and your doubts. You will always have fears and doubts. They will always be a voice in your head telling you you can't or a feeling of fear as you advance and progress through life. You will always have a voice of bravery also and confidence that tells you that you can do it. Depending on your life experiences, one of these voices will be louder and more influential on you than the other. You must exercise your inner confidence voice. You must grow your voice of confidence by spending time with positive people, reading positive books, laughing and being happy. These things will naturally grow your inner confidence voice. The voice of doubt gets bigger, louder and stronger when you spend time around negative situations and people. You must become bigger than your fear voice. 
then you have the power to take action without having your own fear shut you down. Let's talk about presentation. How do you package your chocolate? I want you to imagine two bars of chocolate, one wrapped in toilet paper, the other one in a unopened branded foil chocolate bar wrapper. Which one would you prefer to eat? What if I told you that the one with the toilet tissue was the better tasting chocolate? It really wouldn't matter, would it? You don't want to eat something so badly packaged, do you? It's the same with you. Most of us package ourselves and what we do in toilet paper and wonder why no one wants to buy and eat that chocolate bar. Your success is a motivation for others and you should have no hesitation in packaging what you do and yourself in the best possible way. People want the best possible service. They want you to package yourself in the best possible way. People will not accept what you have to offer if you package it in an inferior way. So make sure that you package your chocolate bar properly if you want it to ever be eaten. Okay, let's talk about mentoring. This is a very, very important aspect of success. The best way that I can explain mentoring is like this. As you progress in life, further and further, you become more and more of an expert in what you're doing. And that gives you the opportunity to turn around and see the people who you've gone past and the people who you're better and the people who you're more successful than. Now, what this gives you the opportunity to do is give them a hand and pull them towards you and up to your level. Even if you charge them, this gives them the opportunity of saving time from learning the hard way and doing it all themselves and them getting a shortcut and learning from somebody who's already um, passed them in the journey to achieve what they want to achieve. Also, as you are going down your success journey, you'll see that there's people that are way in front of you and by you working with them, even if they charge you, you are going to be pulled forward at a much faster pace up to their level. Mentoring is so important for success. It gives you an opportunity to make money by helping people get to your level and it also gives you an opportunity to get to the next level by being mentored by somebody who's far more advanced than you. If you want to be successful, you need to always be on the lookout for people who can mentor you and take you to the next level and also be on the lookout for people who you can mentor and take them to the next level. Adopt and correct. When you meet new people, make sure you ask yourself, what do I like about the way this person behaves? You might say, I like how confident this guy is. I love how motivated this woman is. Make sure that you adopt the characteristics you like about the person. So you would make a plan on paper and you would say to yourself, okay, what can I do to make sure that I am as motivated as this person and I start to show that level of motivation in what I do? What you could also say is, what could I do to be as confident as this person? And it works the other way around. You might say, I don't like the fact that this person doesn't make eye contact. And what you do is basically, you would make a plan on how you can make eye contact deliberately more so that you can correct that in yourself. So you're looking to look for good things that you can adopt, behaviors that you can adopt, characteristics that you can adopt from others. And you're looking to also correct mistakes that you see others make within yourself too. Season of separation. Make a safe distance between you and the people, places and things around you that bring you down. You cannot afford to be around things that make you feel bad. Allow your frequency to get high enough to move up to the next level before you allow yourself to be around people, places and things that will bring you down. What you need to do is give yourself space to grow by removing the weeds from your garden. And that doesn't mean that you're going to just cut people out of your life. But it does mean that you will spend less time around people that bring you down and encourage you to behave in a way which is not congruent with how you want to behave in the future and more time around people, places and things that encourage you to behave in a way which is congruent with how you want to live in the future. Do not be a perfectionist. Be a master improviser. Don't wait for the perfect moment. It will never come. 
Don't be the perfectionist who never completes anything because what you did wasn't perfect. You must learn from your mistakes as you go along. You must be so used to doing what you do that you reach a natural level of skill and expertise. Most importantly, you can never do something perfect. You can never be perfect. Perfect doesn't exist. What you can do, the closest thing to perfect, is constantly improving what you do. If you are committed to constantly improving what you do, then you're going to be much closer to perfect than if you sit there trying to get perfect first time. Get started, that should be your first priority. Then improve every time you do it. That should be your second priority. The most important day is the day that you decide. You must decide now to become extraordinary, to work hard on your dreams until they become real. Most people never decide to actually start. Most people never do anything. They just think about it and never do anything. Decide to take action now. This part of the audio is about learning how to actually learn. And learning why in the past when you have tried to, to get something done or make a change in your life, why it might not have happened or worked properly. Okay, firstly, there's four levels of learning that a person has to go through to learn anything. Level one is unconscious incompetence. Level two is conscious incompetence. Level three is conscious competence. Level four is unconscious competence. The first level of learning is where you don't know that you don't know. You're unconscious of what you don't know how to do. The second level of learning is conscious incompetence, which is where you know what you don't know and you start to know what you need to learn. The third level is conscious competence. That's where you know what to do and you do it consciously. You're consciously doing what you know you have to do. And then there is unconscious competence. And that's the point at which you've been doing what you need to do for so long that has become habitual. The reason why that is in very, very important is because in order for you to be good at anything, let's, let's, take, in, let's take, for example, if you were learning Kung Fu, for you to get to the point of where where for you to get to the point where you look like one of the people in the kung fu films you would need to practice so often that when it came down to an actual kung fu tournament or a fight in the street you don't have to think about what you're doing that will only happen when you've done a routine or you've practiced the skill so many times that your conscious mind switches off and your subconscious mind knows what to do. Like for example, you don't have to think about putting on your clothes in the morning, but if you watch a young child, they have to really concentrate to put their trousers on the right way, to put their clothes on the right way. But there comes a point in your adult life where you've put on your clothes so many times that you no longer have to think about it and you never put your trousers on the wrong way because you've been practicing perfectly for so long that you have become unconsciously competent. What you're aiming to do is find a teacher who can teach you, find a mentor who can teach you the skills that you need to learn for what you want to achieve. And then you're looking to find a drill, a practice drill, a set of instructions that that teacher will give you and you're looking to follow them so precisely and so often that you become unconsciously competent at that skill, that task, whatever you're learning from your teacher, whether it be how to manage your money, whether it be how to defend yourself, whether it be, you know, construction, whatever it is, computer programming, you practice and you practice and you practice and you practice. The problem is most people don't practice for long enough for the knowledge to become subconscious. And if you don't practice for long enough for it to become subconscious, you can never become truly great at doing the skill or the task. Once you've found a teacher or a mentor, there are three guides to you learning and being a good student. Number one 
is making sure that you've you found a teacher who is actually displaying evidence that they know what they're talking about and they actually can do what you're gonna want them to do. What I mean by this is most people are being taught by Dave in the pub. So they they have a problem that they want to be solved and they go and discuss this with Dave in the pub. Dave in the pub says, oh yeah, yeah, you've got to go and do this. Now, if you follow the instruction of Dave in the pub, you might get what you want. But nine times out of 10, you will not get what you want because you're listening to the wrong person. So that's that's number one with the guides of learning. Like you need to, the number one guide to being a good student and to learning properly is make sure you're listening to the right people. Stop listening to Dave in the pub. Stop listening to Tracy in the hair salon. Listen to the right person. Go and look for somebody who actually knows what they're talking about. Number two is when you find that person, be willing to sacrifice your time and your money and some goodwill. Example of what I mean. When you do actually find a teacher, if that teacher turns around and says, okay, I will teach you, but it's going to cost you £500. If you really want to learn what it is that they have to teach you, they're being a good teacher by charging you £500. Most people really don't get this, but this is how it works. Would I be a good teacher if I gave you what you wanted without you sacrificing anything? I must remind you that we have libraries and we have Google you can find out practically anything that you want to find out on earth at this point. But because there's no sacrifice and there's no money, Google is completely free. So it means that when when people get the information that they want without putting down any kind of sacrifice to get it, they don't use it. You will not apply the information. A good teacher will make sure that the student has sacrificed time, money, and goodwill in order to make sure that that student is serious. Because it is only when you have sacrificed some, it's only when you cut out some of what you are already experiencing in order to get what you want, you will actually use what you want properly. You will use the information properly. Let me give you an example of this, just in case you don't get what I mean. Every Kung Fu film has the same plot line. The student gets into a fight and then he runs to the master. This is the same plot line that was in almost every Shaolin monk film that I've ever seen. This is the same plot line that was in Karate Kid. The American guy, young guy, gets beat up. And then he goes to Mr. Miyagi and he says to Mr. Miyagi, I want you to teach me Kung Fu. Teach me how to defend myself so I don't keep on getting beaten up. Now, Mr. Miyagi says, he doesn't just say, okay, turn up tomorrow and I'll teach you Kung Fu. He says, turn up tomorrow and, and we'll see. And then the guy turns up and he says, okay, now wax the floors. Now, the student turns around and says, I, don't, did, I didn't turn up here. To wax the floors. I want to know the, the, how to do Kung Fu. Mr. My, Mr. Miyagi says, no, you're going you're gonna to polish the floors for three weeks. And what that is, that's a compliance test. That's, that's Mr. Miyagi making sure that the American student has to sacrifice some of his time. Because we live in a culture where people want things faster and faster and faster, as a teacher, when you just go ahead and give people the instructions on how to do what they need to do, what happens is that person then takes your knowledge, puts it into a folder and puts the folder on the shelf and watches the latest soap, movie or latest animation, whatever, watches the latest YouTube silly animal video. Like if you don't make people sacrifice then they're not going to take and use what you give them in the first place. So the second guide to learning is be willing to sacrifice your time, your money and goodwill. 
whatever your teacher tells you to sacrifice, be willing to sacrifice within reason. Third guide to learning is making sure that your desire to use the information that you're learning is just as much in balance as the amount of information that you're learning. What I mean by that is that if you're going to learn something which is very complicated, make sure that you are writing down the reasons why you really want to learn this. Because otherwise, what happens is you become burnt out. You're taking in so much new information and you're not reminding yourself that this information that you're learning is really valuable for you and you really want to take it in. This is where a lot of people go wrong. And then the people who do that end up with lots of information, loads and just like mass amounts of information, but they don't balance it up with actually practicing and actually knowing what they want to do with, with the information. So if, if you were, again, if you were learning something like Kung Fu and you're learning lots and lots and lots of it and you're learning really advanced levels of it, then at the same time, you want to be practicing it and you also want to be um, writing down why you want to learn this thing. And you want to be putting yourself into an environment which encourages you learning this particular thing. If you want to be a musician, you want to be putting yourself into an environment where there's other musicians so that you have a benefit and a reason why you need to learn the music. A perfect example of this would be if if you're learning music and you're learning it to a high degree, then make sure you put yourself into some kind of performance where you have to actually perform that the stuff that you're learning because then that gives you the pressure to recall every piece of information that you've been taught. Also remind yourself by writing down your reasons why, your reasons why you're learning music or you're learning whatever it is that you're learning. So those are the three guides to learning. Listen to the right people. Make sure that you're willing to sacrifice what your teacher told you to sacrifice. Make sure you're willing to give up, you know, your time. Make sure you're willing to, to pay the money for the course. And then number three, make sure that you balance your learning with practice and performance and motivation or else the information will just stay information and eventually you will lose the skill that you've picked up. When you have found a teacher or a mentor, make sure that you always get a DMO from them. That DMO is basically what you need to practice every single day in order to get very, very much more skilled at the thing that you're learning. So you want, after your teacher has given you all of the information, you want to ask the teacher, what do I need to do on a daily basis in order to practice this that I've learned, this thing that I've learned? This is one of the main reasons why people don't move on to the next level. Because if you wake up and you don't have a daily method of operation you don't have a, a, a list of things that you're going to do like a drill like a soldier knows that his drill that he has to do when he's not at war he knows he has to clean his boots make his bed five miles of jogging one hour in the gym whatever it is he knows what he has to do he knows his daily method of operation that's why whether he's at war or not they 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 have a routine the same way a a, a great swimmer like an athlete a professional swimmer who's like a, a world champion olympic medal swimmer knows his training routine he knows that he has to be in the in the pool by six o'clock in the morning and he has to swim for four hours every day same thing with a boxer he knows that he has to be in the boxing gym hitting the bag six o'clock in the morning until eight o'clock in the morning and then he goes for his jog and then he goes and does his other things that he does with his life but he has a daily method of operation this is what makes him perform under pressure he knows that he has a certain few number of skills that he must practice and do in order to bring out the best of his skills that he's learning and he's and he's learned so when you find your teacher the thing that you want to ask the teacher is what 
do I need to practice daily? You must stick to and dedicate your time and resources to applying your DMO. By applying your DMO, your skill level will improve. By applying your DMO, your skill level will move from consciously competent to unconsciously competent. If you don't have a DMO, you always feel lost, confused, bored and angry. If you don't have a DMO, you cannot focus your energy into one spot to create power and progress. If you don't have a DMO, you will never build up a daily routine and without a routine, you will never become good at what you do because you'll always be doing something new and different. You'll always be changing your pattern of daily behavior. In order to bring power into your life, you need to not have constant variety and change, but get used to consistency and repetition because it's through consistency and repetition that you become a master in what you do. And it's only through mastery that you become valued in society. You will only get paid well when people see you as a master of what you do, when people see you as one of the only people who can do what you do at the level that you can do it. That is when you will be able to command whatever paycheck you wanna command. That's when people will treat you with respect. And if you look around, the masters are treated with respect no matter what field they're in. Master football players are treated with the utmost respect in the same way that master chefs are treated with the utmost respect, in the same way that master journalists are treated with the same respect, in the same way that, you know, if you look around you, you'll see it. Masters respect other masters and even normal people who haven't haven't built up mastery in anything respect other masters people are just willing to pay more to experience being around a master i want you to think about the difference in price of going to a normal restaurant opposed to going to the restaurant of a chef like gordon ramsay jamie oliver people like that the difference between going to a normal restaurant and going to a michelin star restaurant why did they introduce these levels of service? It's because they want to distinguish between different levels of competence, different levels of expertise. And in order for you to get paid as highly as you want to get paid, you have to be at the highest level of mastery in what you do.